Today marks a departure from the usual opening routine. There's something important I must share. First and foremost, I owe you all an apology for the recent scarcity of content. It's been a challenging period for me personally. I encountered a health scare that temporarily robbed me of my ability to speak. Despite being forewarned about the potential for vocal paralysis following my surgery, the reality hit harder than expected. It's disconcerting to wake up and find yourself unable to utter a single word, repeating that silent struggle for five consecutive days before any semblance of sound returns. As I contemplate the future direction of this channel, I'm considering a shift towards a more interactive format, involving others recounting their near-death experiences while I assume a backstage role. Does this signal the end of me narrating these videos personally? Perhaps. The exact timeline for this transition remains uncertain, but change is on the horizon. In the interim, I'll continue to narrate when possible, though the frequency of uploads will inevitably decrease, aiming for one or two videos per week at most. I deeply appreciate your understanding and unwavering support throughout this journey. But enough preamble. Let's delve into today's narrative. It was the summer of 96, and I found myself at the tender age of 25, nestled in the picturesque confines of Lake Louise, Alberta, Canada. Fresh from a year teaching English in Japan and exploring Southeast Asia, I had landed a part-time gig at a local bookstore, affording me ample time to indulge in my love for outdoor pursuits. Whether it was the rush of adrenaline or the allure of nature's bounty, I was drawn to activities that kept me on my toes. Rock climbing had recently captured my interest, and I reveled in regular hikes through the rugged mountain terrain. But it was the thrill of mountain biking that had captured my imagination that summer, buoyed by the acquisition of my very first mountain bike, a resplendent purple TRDK. Fortune seemed to favor me further when I struck up a friendship with the salesman, an avid cyclist well-versed in navigating the local trails. Eager to put my new wheels to the test, we embarked on an ambitious ride up and down the imposing mountain slopes. The ascent proved arduous, yet I persevered, fueled by youthful exuberance and a robust fitness regimen. As for the details of the descent, they elude me, obscured by the haze of memory loss. The next recollection finds me ensconced in the solitude of my apartment, nestled in the staff quarters at the mountain's base, nursing a grievous injury to my left arm. The events leading up to this moment remain fragmented, a disjointed sequence of fragmented images and disjointed recollections. A concerned friend's arrival and the discovery of my battered helmet and dirt-smeared limbs serve as grim reminders of a misadventure gone awry. Following the ordeal of my mountain biking mishap, my friend promptly sought medical assistance, summoning a local clinic doctor to tend to my injuries. Despite the pain, I felt a strange detachment from the proceedings, as if observing from a distance. The doctor diligently cleansed the wounds with what I can only recall as a scrubby, a process that intensified the discomfort, though shock dulled the sensation. With my arm duly slung, I was dispatched home with instructions to rest, an order I dutifully followed, though in retrospect, the severity of my condition warranted more urgent attention. In the ensuing hours and days, time blurred into a haze of convalescence. I retreated to the confines of my room, nursing my wounds and grappling with the enigmatic gaps in my memory. The events leading up to my tumble down the mountain remained shrouded in mystery, a narrative punctuated by disjointed recollections and unanswered questions. Despite retracing the trail in search of clarity, the elusive truth remained frustratingly beyond reach. Speculation abounds regarding the circumstances of my fall. A momentary lapse in judgment, perhaps, or an unfortunate encounter with a water bar disrupting the smooth descent. Yet, these conjectures offer little solace in the face of an irrevocably altered reality. The passage of time has only served to underscore the futility of such musings, as I resignedly accept that some mysteries are destined to remain unsolved. Amidst this uncertainty looms the question of my near-death experience, a defining moment amidst the chaos of my fractured recollections. The precise locus of this encounter eludes me ensconced as I was in the fog of confusion. Yet the memory remains etched indelibly upon my consciousness, a beacon of clarity amidst the murk of uncertainty. Set against the backdrop of my mother's battle with cancer, mortality loomed large in my consciousness, casting a somber pall over my perceptions of life and death.
It was amidst this tumultuous backdrop that I found myself transported to a realm of ethereal light and boundless warmth, a sanctuary devoid of form, yet suffused with an overwhelming sense of presence. In the company of beings exuding an aura of boundless compassion, I was enveloped in a sense of belonging, their words resonating with a familiarity that transcended comprehension. Though bereft of physical form, I basked in the radiance of their unconditional love, their very essence a testament to the ineffable beauty of the human spirit. Though the specifics of my near-death experience may remain shrouded in ambiguity, its impact upon my consciousness endures. A beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty of existence, a reminder of the enduring power of love to transcend the boundaries of mortal life. I don't recall much about their physical forms, but I do remember glimpsing two distinct faces. Their features were somewhat obscured, yet I could discern the presence of eyes, a nose, and something akin to a mouth. Their heads appeared elongated, larger than those of humans. Despite the lack of clarity in their features, their eyes emanated warmth and kindness, suffusing the space with an aura of joy and welcome. I would liken them to beings of light or energy, their essence is seemingly diffused compared to the solidity of flesh and blood. Their features, though visible, appeared blurred and fuzzy to my perception, suffused with a radiant glow that suggested a luminous energy. While immersed in this luminous realm, I felt enveloped in an atmosphere of boundless positivity and love. Though I perceived only light, an intuitive awareness hinted at the existence of darkness, a truth that I accepted without fear. It was as though the duality of light and dark was an inherent aspect of existence, symbolized aptly by the yin and yang. Recalling the moments spent in the company of these beings, my memories remain somewhat hazy. I have a vague sense of conversing with them telepathically, though the details elude me. It seems that our discourse centered on my presence in that realm and a sense of obligation to return. I distinctly recall expressing my desire to aid my mother, who was battling breast cancer, a sentiment met with eager assistance from one of the beings. The memory becomes clearer as I observe the being's movements toward a radiant, ineffable light, a manifestation of pure, unconditional love that defies verbal description. Though I could not gaze directly into its brilliance, the beings ventured forth, returning with a luminous orb of light, an offering bestowed upon me amidst the transcendent splendor of that divine presence. Despite the glitches in my recollection, I find solace in the linear progression of events, acknowledging the possibility that my brain injury may have muddled the clarity of my memories. Yet amidst the haze of uncertainty, the profound impact of that experience endures, an indelible testament to the transformative power of love and light. It was approximately the size of a cantaloupe. They cradled it gently, yet it possessed a weightlessness that defined conventional perception. As they presented me with this ethereal sphere, intended for my mother, I experienced what can only be described as a divine revelation. It felt akin to a scene from The Matrix, where torrents of information flooded my consciousness, yet the essence of it all was strikingly simple. Upon contact with the luminous orb, the intricacies of human biology and wellness were laid bare before me, rendered in exquisite clarity. Healing and health unfolded in a display of breathtaking simplicity and beauty, leaving me awestruck by the profound realization that wellness is within reach for all. I felt a profound sense of humility and an overwhelming desire to share this newfound understanding with others to convey the ease with which healing can be attained. Though my heart and soul yearned to impart this revelation to the world, I grappled with the limitations of language in capturing the essence of what I had experienced. As for my departure from the realm of light, my memory offers no recollection of farewells exchanged with the beings of light or the return to my corporeal form. The memory of this transcendent encounter seemed to materialize in the weeks following my accident, a testament to the ineffable nature of such experiences. In the intervening years, my mother faced her own battle with cancer, emerging victorious after undergoing rigorous treatment. Whether the luminous gift played a role in her recovery remains a matter of conjecture, yet the gratitude I feel for the experience remains undiminished. If this glimpse of the afterlife is any indication, the journey beyond this earthly realm promises to be an extraordinary one. With that, I conclude today's recounting of my experience. As always, I invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Until our next encounter, may you remain safe and blessed on your own journey.